Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so I just did a video on op amps, kind of an introduction, and showed how to derive the equation for an inverting amplifier uh, op amp. And so in this video, it's gonna be a microcap tutorial where I'm gonna show you the guts of the op amp, the innards. <laughs> There's a bunch of transistors, and that's what they're made of, a whole bunch of transistors, resistors, and it looks like a, you know, a schematic of an audio amplifier. So let's take a look in microcap and let's take a look at this thing, okay? Oh, and before we do that, I just want to go over a little bit of theory on it. Now, this uh, op amp we're going to look at is a 741. It's a LM741. A lot of the time it's referred to now. I think when it started off, it was called the Microamp 741 by National Semiconductor. And uh, David Fuligar, I think he was a Scottish engineer who came up with this design. Uh, it wasn't the first op amp design, but it was one of the first, and it came out in 1968, I believe. And wow, it's still around. It's a very common op amp. Um, it's a general purpose type op amp. It's made up of BJTs, bipolar junction transistors, a whole bunch of them. Now, after that, they started to make them out of bifets. They called it bifet technology. And that was bipolar with FETs. And they used the FETs on the input, like uh, I think they used a lot of JFETs for the high in input impedance, extremely high input impedance on those things. But you could still get the high gain from like using a bipolar. So they kind of mixed the two together. But, and you know, you can get those kind and uh, today, but the 741 is still a very common op amp. So we're going to take a look at the insides of it and. You know, the, the thing with the op amp is ideally it's going to have a lot of gain. And then it's going to roll off. And you'll see how that uh, works when I show you the insides of the op amp. But it rolls off somewhere around 10 hertz. And it rolls off about, I think, 20 dB per decade. Basically crossing over the unity gain, 0 dB. Which, that means like if you put 10 millivolts in, you get 10 millivolts out. It's unity, uh, gain of 1. Which is 0 dB. And that happens right around the targets, usually I think one megahertz, okay? So what that really means is that when you set up the gain with your resistors and so on, you're going to be operating, you know, beneath that, somewhere in here. Now, this, it starts off with 100 dB gain. That's gigantic. So, you know, often you'll have 20 dB, 40 dB gain, something like that. So you're going to be operating down here. And if you add some capacitors in that, you can cross over a little bit earlier. Otherwise your gain will just come out here until it hits this line and follow it down. So let's take a look. All right, so here we are in microcap and we're gonna to go to help search sample circuits. And I'm gonna type in 741 for the op amp. There's two of them actually. I'm gonna grab the top one, load that. And okay, so I've, I have made a change. I've I've changed the text and I've added KISS analog. So kind of forgot I did that. Anyway, here is op amp. Here's all the transistors. Diode, look, there's diode, but it's mostly transistors and resistors. And what we have here is our input circuit. Let me see, there's our input voltage right there and our output over here. And we have our voltage rails are plus 15 and our minus 15 minus VC right there. And then we have these two offset pins and they're tied into this input circuitry so you can uh, balance out your input if you want. So you have that capability. Well, if you look up here, right in the middle, there's a capacitor, 25 picofarad. So that capacitor right there, one end is tied right there. It's tied to the input circuit all the way over here. The other end, if I hover on it, you can see it's tied to the output drive circuit. So it's a feedback cap. And that is what is going to give us our feedback gain. And it's just the capacitor. So that means that it's going to, you know, we're going to see our gain drop off the way we see a capacitor impedance drop. And as frequency goes up. So here, we could simulate this right now. Let's go ahead and do an AC simulation right here. 
and it's all set up. Let me see DB V out and phase V out. Okay. And let me see, here's the ranges right here. X, Y up here. We see the number of points and here's the plot 0.1 Hertz to, uh, what is that? That is like 10 megahertz. So let's go ahead and run it. There we go. So here we are at 0.1 Hertz. So way out here in low frequency, we have really high gain. And if I hover on it, looks like about, yeah, it's pretty close to 100 dB, 97.6. And right here at 10 dB, we're rolling off. And so we're rolling off right around 10 Hertz. So right around 10 Hertz is where we're rolling off here. And then we drop off. And let me see how many dBs per decade. And here's 10K and here's 1K and we've dropped. See at 1K we're about 60 and 40. So we're dropping 20 dBs per decade. And then here's one megahertz. So we're, here's two. So we're dropping to zero dB right between, you know, about 1.5 megahertz. And there's zero dB right there. And then our phase zero and then just right around the crossover point is where we're going to see about a 45 degree phase shift and we do and that drops to 90 and stays 90 all the way out until it drops again there's something else happening out here well we're at the point of the transistors just losing their gain okay so that's our circuit okay now what i want to do is i want to show what this looks like i mean we're seeing the guts of an op amp so I think we could do something like, let me zoom out just a little bit. And let me just show you something here. I just want to kind of mess around, I guess. Uh, here's a triangle. Well, it's not really drawn it the way I wanted to. So here, let me rotate this guy. That's the shape of our op amp, right? See, so can I stretch this out? There we go. So I was just trying to show you the, the op amp look. Um, if I grab this output here, let's see, can I stretch it beyond there? So there's our output. Whoops. I think I'm off grid, so I'm not getting a good, you know, good clean straight line. But there's our output, and then here's our inputs, right? Here's our non inverting input. So I could stretch it out here. Here's our inverting input. Oh, you know what? I need to pull these out a little bit further to do what I want to do. Okay, there's our minus input or inverting input this is our non-inverting input what i want to do is i want to put some gain on this so i'm going to go ahead and delete this line scissors up here and then i'm going to grab a resistor right here and shoot i don't know right here i guess and we'll make that a 1k resistor okay then I'm going to put a feedback resistor up here, make that a 10K. All right, and then go back to just drawing some lines here. Let's draw this line here to our input. Okay, come over here to our input. Nah, okay. Yeah, I think it's made connection. It's not looking great, but. Okay, then we'll put our feedback resistor down here. This is our inverting input. We're putting our gain around. So we have negative feedback, basically. Yeah, and this over here is just not making the, the right angle here. So we're, not, we're off grid. So let me zoom in on that. See if I can fix that. It's just not a straight line. I'm going to delete it. 
and I'm going to redraw it. Okay, and here. That's a four-way intersection we don't like anyway, so I'm just gonna pull that up like that. That's what I could have done to begin with, I guess. And, oh, you know what? Here, I wanna show you something. I actually fixed this, and I guess I saved it. I kind of forgot that I did that, and I changed the text at the same time. Originally, what you're gonna see, if you go to your circuit, you're gonna see that drawn that way. And semiconductor, uh, they'll do schematics this way, and it looks funky and they might have three or four transistors or even more all tied together and they tie the bases and they just put them in a string parallel like that. That's because they have so many transistors it's hard to draw all the lines correctly, but come on. In this case, we only have two transistors that are drawn that way, so I just grabbed it and I pulled it down to make it look normal, like correct, right? Uh, but yeah, the semiconductor guys, they get so many transistors that we got to give it a pass. I mean, it's hard to draw everything on a one page, you know, with with all the transistors. So anyway, but that in that case, that was a mistake, I think. So here we go. Um, you see a four-way intersection right here, which I don't like to see those. So I could even move that over like that. And so yeah, uh, it just makes it, you know, more obvious. Uh, when they're connected. Okay, um, I mean, when you're zoomed in like this, everything seems obvious, but if you print it off or something like that, it's not so obvious. So here's our 10K feedback or 1K, so that's a gain of 10, right? And it's a minus gain, but we're going into the plus with our input, so we end up going one plus the gain. So uh, it's a gain of 11. All right, so let's just go ahead and run our analysis again. And same, I haven't changed the names of anything, so it should be good. And there we go. So now look, our gain is like 19. And we come all the way out here. And then I didn't add any capacitors or anything like that. So the op amp is the capacitor and that uh, circuit takes over. If you imagine this ramp going all the way up to 100 dB before, we just intersect that ramp and it comes down to 1.5 um, megahertz like it did before. So we're just intersecting where that curve was. Now, if we added a capacitor in our feedback, we could change this so we could, you know, have it drop off after say 20K or, you know, we could have a drop off 40 dB out here or something like that. But there we go. And then look, our phase stays down at zero all the way out here at 10K because, and then we intersect that phase line again because now we're dropping the gain below that 10 hertz where before at 10 hertz we got a phase shift. We don't see that phase shift down because our gain is never doing that. It's never hitting that pole, which uh, that capacitor makes a pole, what we call it, where the gain uh, drops down. So we're not seeing that, so therefore we don't see the phase shift. Now the phase is flat all the way out to 10, 20 kilohertz, which we like seeing say audio uses in that but yeah there you go and then this circuit over here if i want to hit this one right here i can resize that so we can see the whole thing and yeah so i drew the op amp there you go that's your non-inverting op amp with a gain of a 10k and 1k making 10 plus the non-inverting is 11 so a gain of 11. so that's what that should be take the log of that 20 times and it should come out to be about 20 dB. I mean, that's about where we are. Okay, all right. So there you go, guys. If you want a copy of this, the way I've drawn it, I can send it to you, send me an email, but you can find it yourself and make your own corrections and try this on your own as well. All right, so what do you think? Pretty cool, right? Bunch of transistors. And it's just cool the microcap has all these built-in uh, circuits that you can play with. So there you go. There's another one you can play with. And you can change those gains and, you know, work with that. And, and you can play with the value of that capacitor, by the way. Now, remember, save the circuit before you start playing with it. 
Uh, and then that way you keep the original circuit. You can always call it back up. And you can always save your new circuit under some other name. Okay. But yeah, I, I often put like my name and maybe a date. So I remember when I was working on that circuit when I'm looking through my files. That's, yeah, that's one way to do it. But anyway, have fun. And hey, I want to give two thumbs up to my patrons. Really appreciate you guys. And you become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. Links down below. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, and a little tease. Uh, our, our Australian Santa Claus has sent me this BM786. You know, Dave uh, was super nice, sent me this thing. He kind of did a video and opened up the 77 and compared the two. I was going to do a video. It's funny how we're kind of timed up, right? Because I was going to do a video that same time, but uh, it didn't work out. So anyway... Mine's coming a little bit later, but it's going to be an actual review of the 79.3. Because I have the 79, not the 77. I used to have a 77, but I don't know where it is. Anyway, got this BM786. I'm going to put batteries in. And I might have to pull out the Fluke 189 because that's probably going to actually be a better comparison. But, yeah, yes. Anyway, that's coming up.